Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're getting our first look at the ARC A380, Intel's first generation discrete GPU codenamed Alchemist, or the architecture that it's based on is codenamed Alchemist. This is, well, it's an unofficial review, let's say, because Intel is yet to sort of start their own official review program. And in a lot of ways, they haven't officially re released this product, at least not worldwide. So the only release so far for this product has been inside China. And that means I purchased this model here for way, way too much money from an eBay seller in China. But despite that, I appreciate being able to get my hands on one early. And of course, thank you to our Patreon and Floatplay members who help make content like this possible, along with. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Be Quiet and the new FX range, which adds ARGB lighting to some of our favorite Be Quiet products. Their new Pure Base 500 FX case comes with four pre installed Be Quiet Lightwings fans, complete with internal and external ARGB lighting. Then for cooling, you have the option of either air or liquid. The Pure Rock 2 FX is the Pure Rock 2 Black that we all know and love, but now with a Lightwings 120mm fan. Likewise, the Pure Loop has been upgraded to the Pure Loop 2 FX with a new and improved pump that supports PWM control, supports radiators up to 360 millimeters, and of course, up to three Lightwings high-speed ARGB fans. Discounts of up to $30 US can be had when you purchase any FX product between now and the end of September. So to find out more, please click the links in the video description. Okay, so like everyone else who has managed to get their hands on an A380 so far, uh, we have the Gunner Photon model, which I have to say, it does look like a, a rather well put together graphics card. But for now, we're more interested in the ARC 3 A380 GPU. This will be Intel's most entry-level offering in the Alchemist liner, expected to cost somewhere between $120 and $130 US, which would make it the cheapest new graphics card on the market today. Based on TSMC's N6 process, the DG2128 die packs 7.2 billion transistors inside a 157mm square die. As for the core configuration, there are 1024 cores, 64 TMUs, and 32 ROPs. Then for the memory, we have 6GB of 15.5GB per second GDDR6 memory on a 96-bit wide bus for a bandwidth of 186 gigabytes per second, which is comparable to that of the GeForce GTX 1650. Now, in terms of features, all Alchemist GPUs support AV1 fixed function hardware encoding, DisplayPort 2.0, DirectX 12 Ultimate, hardware-based ray tracing, and XESS or super sampling based on neural networks, so similar to NVIDIA's DLSS. So at least in terms of features, these new Arc GPUs will rival that of current generation AMD and NVIDIA parts. Performance though and driver support, well, that could be a totally different story. As I'm sure many of you are aware at this point, as several other media outlets have already gotten their hands on the A380, Intel still has a lot of work to do on the driver front. And there are also a few strange quirks, such as the need for resizable bar support in order to deliver acceptable performance. Therefore, our plan is to first cover the A380 with our standard review format, which is exactly what we're doing now, and then in the next week or two, establish baseline performance across a far broader range of games, so 30 plus, hopefully up around 50 if I'm up to the task. I suspect and of course hope that Intel will continue to work on driver support, and make good improvements there over the coming months and years. So by getting all this data now, we can monitor that progress as it happens. So with that, let's get into the benchmark results. For testing, I'm using our Ryzen 9 5950X GPU test system, and I know no one is gonna pair a budget graphics card with this CPU, but of course, that's not the point. We're testing GPU performance, and therefore wish to avoid introducing any other kind of system bottleneck, which could skew the data. Now, for our low end to entry level testing, we typically use medium quality settings or settings that make sense for a given title. Also, please note that the A380 has been tested with and without resizable bar enabled, whereas all other GPUs have been tested with rebar disabled, but this is something I'd like to update in the future. Finally, I've tested at 1080p and 1440p, but for this video, I'm gonna focus on the more relevant 1080p results, while the 1440p graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we find that the A380 isn't exactly the snappiest of GPUs. 48 FPS at 1080p using the medium quality preset is it. So better than the old GTX 1050 Ti, I guess, but 
11% slower than the RX 6400 when that part is afforded PCIe 4.0 bandwidth. Probably more disappointing though is the fact that it is 9% slower than the RX 570, a now five year old graphics card that started life at just $170 US. Still, the game was playable, so I guess there's that, though I should note you absolutely need rebar enabled, as Intel recommends, otherwise you will be limited to just 36 FPS on average with weaker and frankly unplayable 1% lows of 23 FPS. Next up we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider and performance here is downright horrible with just 42 FPS on average at 1080p and although we are using the highest quality settings, the old RX 570 was good for just 54 FPS and the RX 6400 53 FPS. That said, if we limit the RX 6400 to PCIe 3.0 bandwidth, it is comparable with the A380. Of course though, you will want to make sure rebar is enabled because without it, the game wasn't playable under these conditions, though it possibly would be if we lowered the quality settings. Moving on to Watch Dogs Legion, the results here are more promising, though we're still only looking at RX 570 or RX 6400 light performance, still 59 FPS on average with the medium quality presets, very playable, and it's certainly competitive with the RX 6400. Again though, you need rebar support because without it, the A380 quickly becomes a GTX 1050 Ti. Next up, we have Rainbow Six Siege and like Watch Dogs Legion, the performance is reasonable here relative to the competition. In fact, it's a bit better than that, matching the Radeon RX 6500 XT. And in fact, the 1% lows were quite a bit better. It's still not quite GTX 1650 or RX 570 performance, but still 114 FPS on average using the ultra quality settings is a good result here and far better than that of the RX 6400. Though once again, be aware that rebar is required as without it, performance will drop by as much as 26%. With F1 2021, the A380 is back to delivering RX 6400 light performance, which I guess given the expected price will be okay. And the performance overall was very playable and not too bad given that we are using high quality settings. Of course, as we've come to learn, rebar is mandatory and without it, the game was unplayable with 1% lows of just 22 FPS. Next, we have Horizon Zero Dawn. And again, we're looking at RX 570 and RX 6400 light performance. So 50 FPS on average. Not horrible, I suppose. Though again, as I found over and over now, Rebar will be required as without it, the A380 is slower than even the GTX 1050 Ti. The Far Cry 6 performance was very lackluster, just 52 FPS on average, which is less than that of the GTX 1650 and on par with the RX 6400 when limited to PCI 3.0, but 22% slower than the 6400 when using PCI 4.0 and then 22% slower than the RX 570, so that's not good. Doom Eternal performance was reasonable. 56 FPS at 1080p using the ultra quality preset is an 8% increase over the RX 6400, but still 10% slower than the old RX 570. The game was playable though, so that is a huge positive for the A380, and it would seem about where we're starting the bar at this point. Frame rates in Resident Evil Village were also reasonable. 68 FPS on average meant the A380 was slightly faster than the GTX 1650, but once again, slower than the much older RX 570. Now with rebar disabled, the average frame rate still looks quite reasonable and normally 58 FPS would be very playable, but the 1% lows were horrible, leading to a very stuttery gaming experience. The Death Stranding results are more concerning as here the A380 is 13% slower than the RX 6400 and 15% slower than the RX 570 as it only matched the already very underwhelming GTX 1650. Again though, the game was playable, so if you set the bar low enough, the A380 does get a pass, as long as rebar is supported and enabled, because without it, the Arc GPU was basically broken in this title. Now, the second last game tested is Hitman 3, and this is another rough title for the A380, which only saw GTX 1650 light performance, making it slower than both the RX 570 and RX 6400. Of course, 58 FPS on average with 1% lows of 53 FPS is playable, so there is that, but without rebar, the 1% lows did drop to 26 FPS, and here the experience was horrible, unplayable even. Finally, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and I was pretty shocked to see the A380 doing quite well here relative to parts such as the RX 6400 and RX 570. 
both of which it beat by a 16% margin when rebar was enabled. Sadly though, 44 FPS on average at 1080p using the medium quality preset is at best a suboptimal gaming experience, but relative to other budget graphics cards, I suppose it is a pass. Now moving on to power consumption, we see that the A380, which is reasonably light on power usage, it's still not quite where it needs to be. Total system usage was pushed up to 233 watts, so slightly higher than that of the GTX 1650 Super, and that's a GPU that on average was a bit over 40% faster in our testing. Ideally, the A380 would want to be down below the RX 6400 here, but in reality though, for most gamers, the difference here won't matter as the Arc graphics card still works just fine with low-end budget power supplies. Now, for looking at the cooling performance, I recorded the gameplay with an on-screen display using the Intel Graphics Command Center, so the A380 was used for the video encoding here. Admittedly, I am yet to really properly play around with this, but I was unable to record gameplay without extremely choppy feedback. The game, though, ran quite smooth, and certainly a lot smoother than you're seeing here. Anyway, for the purpose of recording the operating statistics, it still works, so I'll just use it. When gaming, the Gunner Photon A380 peaked at just 60 degrees with a fan speed of no more than 1600 RPM, making it a very cool and quiet graphics card. So that is a positive. The GPU was typically seen clocked at 2.4 GHz, and the memory operated at the advertised 15.5 gigabits per second. So overall, a good quality graphics card, it's just a shame about the frame rate performance. Okay, time for the dozen game breakdown, and as expected, the results aren't great. The A380 is at best only able to match the RX 6400 and old GTX 1650, making it on average 11% slower than the five-year-old RX 570 and way slower than the 5500 XT, which shares a similar size die. In short, I hated the performance we received from the RX 6400, so I can't say I'm overly impressed with the Arc A380. Although it is only early days for Intel's Alchemist architecture and the entry-level Arc A380, which technically still hasn't been released yet, at least not outside of China. So yeah, to say the situation for Intel is extremely concerning right now, I think that's a massive understatement. And we always knew, like some of this isn't unexpected. We always knew that drivers would be the Achilles heel of any Intel discrete GPU venture. And perhaps that's all we're looking at here. Perhaps it's just a lack of driver development that could improve over the coming months and years. Frankly though, that is probably a best case scenario as more recently it's been suggested that Intel's been stalling the release of their Arc series due to fundamental hardware issues that can't be resolved by drivers alone. Of course, at this point in time, we don't know how true this is and really it is just a rumor, but I think it's also fair to say the expected rough start has been just that. In fact, the rumor mill has been running hot in regards to Intel Arc news, with many suggesting that Intel is seriously considering cancelling the entire project, allegedly considering it too expensive with no clear road to profit, and with the release continually pushed back and yet to actually happen outside of China, we fear the rumors could end up being true. Frankly, it'll be really, really disappointing if they don't continue to push forward. Intel's first generation of discrete GPUs was never going to be profitable. The execution was never going to be flawless or even smooth, and it was always going to take three or four generations before they started to get on their feet. We would have assumed Intel knew this and had budgeted for it, but if the rumors are true, apparently not. Rumors aside though, the A380 is clearly disappointing, but I don't think it's a lost cause. Assuming further driver development can pretty up the picture a bit. Granted, it's a complete mess without resizable bar, but for now, I'd like to think Arc is sort of a forward-thinking investment. And Intel themselves has said that support for older games won't be great. The focus is really on new titles using modern APIs, so DirectX 12 and Vulkan, for example. Clearly, they're also focusing on new PC hardware as well, as the A380 is a horrible pairing for an older PC that doesn't support resizable bar. And in the current condition, you absolutely need to enable rebar if you're going to use an Arc GPU. Of course, the question of whether or not you should buy an Intel Arc GPU when they're eventually released can't be definitively answered just yet. That said, in its current condition, along with the uncertain future of Intel's discrete GPU program, the answer is quite clearly no. There's also the matter of pricing, and let's just assume for a moment that the rumors are all wrong, so forget basically everything we just discussed, meaning Intel is 100% committed to ARC, 
and its driver development. If the A380 were to hit shelves for around, let's say, $120 to $130 US, which is about $50 US less than the RX 6400, should you buy it? I'd say if the only alternative was the RX 6400, a graphics card I very much despise, unless you need it for a low profile application, I could see myself gambling on the A380, mostly because I don't care for playing older games anymore. You also get hardware encoding, which I very much like to use, though that could probably do with some software development. You get more than two display outputs and AV1 decoding. You also get an extra two gigabytes of VRAM, which is already proven particularly handy. And then the PCIe x16 interface should help to mitigate any performance related issues when maxing out the VRAM buffer or getting close to maxing it out. However, for gamers on a tight budget, either the A380 or RX 6400 wouldn't make my recommendation anyway. Rather, I'd suggest checking out your local used market and over on eBay.com, for example, RX 570s regularly sell for around $100, while GTX 1650 Supers go for more like $150, and both are faster than either the RX 6400 or A380. Intel certainly has a lot of work ahead of them, and I sincerely hope they can eventually position themselves as a legitimate third competitor in the discrete GPU market. But for now, that's not looking particularly promising, I have to say. And we'll leave it at that for now. Consider this somewhat of a preview. Hopefully there'll be a lot more ARC related stuff coming up on the channel over the next few months. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to see that 30, 40, 50 game benchmark comparing this head to head with the Radeon RX 6400 in a range of games, maybe with a few different quality settings, then let me know in the comment section below and perhaps I can make that happen. Also, if you'd like to become a Harborbox community member, Floatplane Patreon links for those are in the video description. You'll get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&As, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff there, so check it out if you're interested. But if not, perfectly fine, and I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.